Cobbiz. Hello and welcome to Cobbiz. My name is Shalin Verma and today we will understand the use of matrix and checklist that are used while preparing an EIA report. So let's begin by understanding why these tools are needed. As impact prediction is required to understand which activities of a proposed project will affect which environmental aspect, the consultants use a simple and effective method for conducting preliminary assessment and baseline studies. A matrix, therefore, is a table that identifies the environmental factors a project may impact and the potential effects of those factors. Checklists, on the other hand, are prepared as a part of environmental impact assessment at the stage of scoping. It includes the inputs from the baseline study and incorporates most of the data obtained from it. Matrix are used for identification of environmental impacts by first identifying all those activities that need consideration and listing out all the possible implications of these activities. They show environmental components such as species diversity, water quality, etc. in a region on one side and developmental actions like construction, land clearing and building operation on the other side. The entries done in the cell of a matrix can either be qualitative or quantitative to estimate the impact. So why does a project proponent needs to know about these tools? Let's understand it. A proponent is an essential stakeholder in the EIA process and he must be aware of the key impact areas to find the optimum solution and suggest any mitigation strategies with minimal change in the initial planning. The assessment process can be made simple and effective by introducing these tools. A checklist is a simple and effective way of conducting preliminary assessment and can be used to determine if a full EIA is required or not. Also, using a checklist helps to ensure that the potential environmental impacts are identified and assessed systematically and comprehensively. Identifying all measures that can be taken to minimize or mitigate any negative impact on the environment. Now, let's understand the types of matrix used in the assessment process. First is simple matrix, which is a table that identifies the environmental factors and potential effects of those factors that may be impacted. The next one is Leopold matrix, which is a more detailed version of matrix and used in comprehensive EIAs. The third is component interaction matrix, which assesses the interaction between different components with potential indirect or cumulative impacts that may be overlooked in a simple matrix. Now, what are the steps needed to prepare a matrix and checklist for an EIA? Let's have a look. The first one is identification of the factors. This includes the analysis of environmental factors that may be impacted such as air quality, water quality, biodiversity, noise, social impacts, etc. The second is determining the impacts. This step involves evaluating the severity, duration and likelihood of each impact and considering any regulatory requirements or guidelines. The next stage is development of a matrix that is creating a table with columns for environmental factors and rows for potential impacts and using symbols or ratings to indicate the significance of each effect. Next is the review of the matrix to ensure that data accurately reflects the potential environmental impacts of the proposed project or the developmental activity. Lastly, the consultant will include the matrix in the EIA process. Now coming to the steps in the preparation of a checklist. The first step is to define the purpose and scope of the checklist in the EIA process. The next step is identification of the environmental factors such as air quality, water quality, biodiversity, soil quality, noise, social impacts, etc. The next step is determining the assessment criteria for evaluating the significance of the potential effects of each environmental factors such as severity, duration and likelihood of each impact. Next comes the preparation of a checklist. Finally, the consultant will review and refine the checklist and update it when needed. Now, when we talk about checklist, they are relatively simpler and the type of checklist that may be used are screening impact and risk assessment checklist. The choice of matrix and checklist will depend on the scope and complexity of the proposed project or development and the regulatory authorities requirements overseeing the EIA process. Lastly, one must also consider the important factors in the preparation of these tools. 
so when preparing a matrix and a checklist for eia the following factors must be taken into consideration first is project description next environmental factors then comes legal and regulatory requirements next is assessment criteria next comes mitigation measures next is stakeholder engagement next data sources and finally expertise now considering all these factors the eia team can identify and assess all relevant environmental impacts appropriate mitigation measures are identified and implemented to minimize the negative environmental impacts through the use of these tools now there is another important question are matrix better than checklist in an environmental impact assessment to answer this consider the following matrix can be used for both small and large scale projects on the other hand checklist are usually long and require much work to describe an impact this extra work and ambiguity are removed in matrix by introducing a quantitative aspect during impact assessment also checklist needs to be more apparent while assessing multiple levels of impact descriptively this can be resolved by using matrix they can benefit large or complex projects where numerous environmental factors must be assessed and evaluated so both tools have their own set of advantages but utilizing them effectively is the key so if you are searching for experienced eia consultants for the assessment reporting of your project look no further contact cobbs and get the process started with the team of leading and certified eia consultants so that was all for today's video like and share it if you found it helpful also subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more such videos related to environmental clearance process thank you for watching